Coming up on this episode of Nintendo Cartridge Society, is No More Heroes the next Avatar? You know, because it takes like 10 years for a new sequel to come out. It's dangerous to go alone, so the Nintendo Cartridge Society goes with you. Welcome to Nintendo Cartridge Society. My name is Patrick Ellers, and I am joined, as I am always joined, by my co-host, Mark Mitchell. We've got a good show for you this week. We're going to be talking about the news from the week, including everything out of the Indie World Showcase. And then on Thursday, we complete our definitive ranking of all the outfits in Super Mario Odyssey. But Mark, in the meantime, how you doing? I'm doing great. Um, I am really excited for part two of oh, this uh, definitive ranking of the outfits in Super Mario Odyssey. Yeah, it's a, it's a real treat. Um, you know, a little peek behind the curtain is that we did record those episodes back to back. And we started them at like eight o'clock. So like <laughs> we get a little loopy. I'm excited for everyone to hear it and to, uh, you know, see the light of, the, of our definitive ranking, which I'm still, I'm still very proud of it. I think we did a great job. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Um, Mark, can you believe that we are as close as we are to the release of uh, Shang Chi? Like, I can't believe that this that we've got like another Marvel movie coming out in like two weeks. Oh my gosh! No, I can't. Maybe, maybe it's three weeks. Maybe it's three weeks. I mean, <laughs> it's still, it's it's a uh, not that far away. No, I can't. I feel like uh, COVID maybe has completely warped my sense of time um also is is labor day a weird time to release a movie like i feel like it's a uh not a kind of a weird time to release a movie yeah i mean i don't is there a good time to release a movie now mark yes or no no that's a good point that's a good point um the thing that's very exciting to me about shang chi is that it is like the first I've been excited for the for the uh, Disney Plus series. I uh, enjoyed Black Widow, um, but all of it is like that's all old stuff that we're seeing yes. again, right? Like we've seen Loki, we've seen uh, Black Widow, we've seen uh, Scarlet Witch and Vision, we've seen Falcon and Captain America. You know, like yep. all of that is like it's it's old hat. I love exploring it more, but like here's something genuinely new in Marvel. Like yes, yeah, no, completely. It feels like it is setting the stage for kind of, I'm hoping, I always hope this, that yeah. we're going to get weird stuff from Marvel. And we have yes. this, we have the Eternals coming. I just want this stuff to start getting really weird. Speaking of really weird, my copy of Sonic Forces, would you like to borrow it? You can certainly try. All you got to do is email us at Nintendo Cartridge Society at, at gmail.com. Gmail and give us a mailing address where we can send you my copy of Sonic Forces for the Nintendo Switch. You play it for as long as you want, uh, and then you put it back in the envelope, which I provide for you, and you send it back to me with postage that, again, I provide for you. Um, just get on the list. Borrow the game. One thing that might happen is that you accidentally borrow Untitled Goose Game. It'll be inside a Sonic Forces box. Um, it, there's some part of me that wishes that we kept that a surprise for people. Um, <laughs> But also, so few people get to actually borrow it that uh, I, I, I want everyone to know the, uh, the fun chaos that is the Untitled Goose Game portion of the Sonic Forces borrowing program. I mean, I'm not saying we should do this, but it is possible that you could start sending out a third game, but we just don't tell foreign people about that one. Hmm. Okay. Mark, I agree. You're not telling me that we should do that. <laughs> <laughs> Well, here's another thing you can do is you can leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcast. It makes a huge difference in people finding the show. Um, Patrick and I feel a little better, a bit better about ourselves. And really, if you're a Boy Scout, this could be your good deed for the day. Wow. Uh, and are Boy Scouts the only organization that require their members to do good deeds? I assume them and up for people do nuns not have to do good deeds what do nuns have to do i i don't know that they do i mean i guess maybe it's inherent 
in being an, maybe it's like an unspoken rule if you're in a nunnery mm, yeah 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 okay well if also hey if you have to do good deeds for whatever organization you're a part of uh, email us at nintendo cartridge society at, gmail. at gmail.com com. like if you're I on parole if you're on parole <laughs> maybe maybe that's like uh you know you're rich and so you like yeah. uh mm-hmm. got out of a hit and, ru- hit and run by having to do community service and every day you have to do a little bit of good one of those things that wait, could be wait, a little so bit of good <laughs> is maybe just a five-star review the scenario is you're rich but on parole. Yeah, okay, you're rich. Okay. <laughs> you were involved in a hit and run. Okay. How did because... you make your money from a previous oh. uh, hit and run where you were the victim? Yes. Yep. Okay. It's like some weird pay it forward type scenario. You're, you're rich you, uh, from a previous uh, being the victim of a hit and run. Right. Um, you... Although I don't. I don't hmm. How, how how do you get rich off of being... Because a hit and run implies that the perpetrator gets away. Yes. Well, but people... If you can be... Uh, ch- like, you can perform a hit and run. Is that right? You can perform a hit and run, but then later be caught. Yeah, I guess because there's like security camera footage and like license plate And witnesses and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. Okay, so, okay. Right. The scenario I'm laying out is that you... Uh, are a rich person who got your money from being the victim of a hit and run. You mm. are... Um, you Hit and perf- run. Yeah, you perform a <laughs> hit and run and are later caught. But because right. you're rich, justice doesn't apply to you. And so instead of going to prison, you are given uh, community service and parole. And uh, is that how that works? Maybe you're just giving community service. And one of your good deeds could be leaving us a five-star review on there Apple we go there we go <laughs> okay. okay great uh something else you can do is you can check us out on the you've got hanks podcast where uh rachel chapman previous guest on the show uh discusses all of colin hanks's movies uh we were on to talk about uh king kong 2005's king kong um it's a long movie uh and we had some uh fun things to say about it so you can check us out on that and then also october which is coming up real soon is game and watch month uh, we are dedicating an entire month to talking about the Game & Watch series of hardware and software from Nintendo. Um, what exactly that's going to look like, we're not totally sure yet. Uh, if you have any ideas or suggestions or questions that you would like us to explore in the world of Game & Watch, uh, email us at Nintendo Cartridge Society at, at gmail.com. gmail.com. Uh, otherwise, just steal yourself, man. Just get ready. Get ready for some Game & Watch celebration. Yeah, like we were talking about last week, Patrick Patrick and I don't really have a lot of experience with Game & Watch. So in addition to suggestions and things like that, we'd also just love to hear your memories if you are more familiar with Game & Watch. Yeah, or even just familiar with a single Game & Watch. Yes. Like, I I feel Mm -hmm. like there's, you know, uh, one of the things that sets Game & Watch apart from, uh, like, every other Nintendo thing is that, like, it's every game is also a hardware purchase. Um, which means that like necessarily you encountered so many, so like far fewer Game & Watch games um, than you would like a Game Boy game or like NES games or whatever. Um, so whatever you did encounter, let us know. Uh, we will love to talk about it in October. Mark, uh, are you ready to get into what we've been playing this week? Yeah, let's do it. Mark, I've made a discovery about myself and about The Legend of Zelda, The Skyward Sword HD. Um, I might love this game. Oh, I, I love this. I love this. I feel like this is why we do this show. Keep, please mm-hmm. continue. Okay, so I, I trust that you have not had much of an opportunity to uh, continue to play it since last we spoke. That's right. Okay. Um, I... Well, the last time we talked, I was like rolling around on uh, the Elden Volcano, right? Um, like kind of in the lead up to the second dungeon. Um, since then, I have completed that dungeon. I've done the lead up to the third dungeon. I've completed the third dungeon. Uh, I have started, I have, I've encountered the turn in the game. Um, most Zelda games will have this moment where you're like, oh, wait a minute, there's a dark world. And that means I have to do all this other stuff. Or like, wait a minute, I travel forward in time and become adult Link, or wait a minute, um, Tetra is really Zelda, um, and I believe I have reached the turn in Skyward Sword HD, and I am in it. 
I am invested. I am in love with the characters and the worlds and the spaces that I am revisiting. The combat now suddenly feels fluid and fun and like immersive to me. Um, I, I mean, just as, as the game started to like fold back on itself, like one of the things that happens early in the turn is that you uh, go back to uh, Faron Woods and like re-explore it in a different context. Um, and I, w- I had been away from that area for just long enough that when I went back, I was like, oh, yeah, oh, heck yes. Like, you know, I'm, I am I know this space. Things are familiar. Oh, yeah, these Kikwi guys. Yeah, they're great. And now they're like doing something a little different. Um, I just absolutely love it. Like, I, uh, I'm so excited to see how else they continue to, to develop the couple areas I've been to already just like for me to revisit and have more fun and more exciting stuff to do in it. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm really excited to get back into it. Um, we've been talking about how, you know, Game & Watch Month in October is coming up pretty quickly. It is wild to me how fast those games that were announced in Nintendo's I last know. Nintendo Direct are coming up. Like, we're really just a few weeks away from um, the new WarioWare game. And that means we're perilously close to the new Metroid, Metroid? game. Yeah, and so I, I have Skyward Sword HD and Dragon Qu- Quest Eleven S Echoes of Elusive Age Definitive Edition for the Nintendo Switch that I have promised on this show to yep. pursue. And so uh, there's going to be a lot of gaming happening between now and October because uh, there, just, there just has to be. That is what I'm committed to. Um, can I put out a suggestion for people who have either played a little bit of Skyward Sword or who are thinking about it, but are like, eh, you know, I didn't really like what I played on, on the Wii or, you know, whatever. Um, I think the tipping point for me, uh, for this game where I went from like sort of having a good time with it to like genuinely being like pulled through it by like the sheer force of the, the fun of the game, uh, came in the approach to the third dungeon. Um, which I would say I got to probably like six, six and a half hours in. So like, you know, I hate being the like, it gets good after eight hours guy, but like it gets good after like six and a half hours. <laughs> um, the, uh, the conceit is that you are exploring the desert, um, the Laneru desert, right? Um, but there are these uh, stones, these glowing stones called time stones, where when you hit them, uh, it creates like an aura around them that sends everything in that aura back like hundreds of years into the past. Oh, cool. Um, so, and like when you are in that, in those past chunks, um, it's like a verdant green land that's being um, mined for resources by these little robots. And you've seen these robots like kind of strewn about in their like states of disrepair in the modern day. Um, so like, it's just the, the, and the, the, like the puzzles that they construct with this like sort of time traveling mechanic is awesome and super fun and super engaging and just opens up this like mythos that makes the whole world seem so much bigger than what you were exploring before. Um, so like truly if you are struggling at all and like that sounds interesting to you, like that is a point to get to, to start to like really see what this game is and what it can deliver. Oh, that does sound really cool. That does sound really cool. Uh, also these robots are adorable. Like, they're cute robots. I don't know what you want. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've been visiting family this week. And so I have been watching my nephew play Minecraft. And this is the first time that I have ever really like seen and experienced what Minecraft is like. And I yeah. totally get why it's so insanely addicting now. Because it's, it's like the perfect like gameplay loop. Uh, it, what in in what way is it the the perfect loop? Like it's all like it's just like constructing and exploring and then getting rewards for it and then continuing to you know like explore. You make mistakes, you die. Like I uh, I'm watching him play the I guess the adventure mode. Um, and so you know the ultimate bad guy that you're trying to defeat is the Ender Dragon, and you know in order to do that you're just like digging around in this mine, but um, Minecraft gives you, I guess it's not really a mine, but Minecraft gives you so much freedom in how you want to play the game. Like, you can say, okay, I'm going to create a save file where my inventory doesn't uh, persist when I die. And then I'm going to create a save file where it does persist. And so 
you're just allowed to have like fun with it however you want to explore the game and we're not even getting really into like the world building stuff it's just purely this um uh, like campaign or adventure mode i don't know it's really cool i i feel like i had like seen it before kind of understood what it did but I'd never really seen somebody like play it and um i i see why it is why people would like uh, yeah. fall deep into it um how old is your nephew and what is he playing it on so my nephew is 15 and he's playing it on tons of devices he's playing it on the switch he's playing it on the pc he's playing it on you know like his phone like he's playing it everywhere uh that's that's pretty cool man the the play it anywhere like feature of uh of uh minecraft and like kind of a lot of other games right like you know obviously fortnite is like that um is so cool um and it would be nice to see like any kind of Nintendo thing be even remotely like that. But I guess you can take your Switch anywhere, so what am I talking about? <laughs> um, well, all right, that's what we've been playing this week. Let's get into the new releases and what we might be playing next week. And Patrick, I've got to tell you, there's, once again, there's not a lot to talk about. I mean, really, I don't know if there's anything to talk about here. Yeah, kind of tough. Uh, I mean, we we said the same thing last week, and then Nintendo was like, "Oh, by the way, here's an indie world showcase." Right, and, that's true. And all these games out now, including like Axiom Verge Two and Boyfriend Dungeon, and you know, so uh, Nintendo made fools of us last week, Mark. Fools. Yeah. Well, here's an invitation for them to do it again, mm-hmm. because, um, well, I guess in the spirit of new releases, let's just run down a few titles that are releasing that uh, I know nothing about, but today. August 17th, Memories of Azure, or excuse me, Greek. Wait, now that I'm saying this, I feel like we have seen this somewhere. Um, <laughs> but it's Greek Memories of Azure. Oh, do you know what I think it is? I think I was watching a Nintendo Life video that was mm. talking about games that were releasing in August, and this is the one of the ones they mentioned. So that's as much context as I have. But there is a game that I have heard of before. What about this next one? Uh, pile up. Pile up. Box by box. I'm sorry to tell you that no. Uh, you saying it just now is the first time I think that I've heard that at all. All right. All right. On, uh, it, yeah. oh, on Wednesday, August 18th, Rogue Explorer is released. Do you want to pick one from Thursday? Sure. From Thursday, we've got Monster Train First Class. And then on August 20th, uh, Arietta of Spirits is released on the Switch eShop. You didn't want to go with Heart Chain Kitty? Um, I didn't. I chose not to, (laughs) but um, I'm glad that you shouted it out. Uh, All right, Mark. Those are the new releases. Let's close this segment out. Which brings us to a regular segment on our show. It is time. For 433. In 1952, American composer John Cage wrote a piece called 433, wherein a performer or a group of performers didn't play their instruments for four minutes and 33 seconds. For the purposes of this show, our instruments are talking about Nintendo. So, for the duration of one performance, 433, Mark and I will talk about something not at all Nintendo related, thus fulfilling the contract of the piece. Mark, today we are asking the age old question uh, aisle seat or window seat? Mark, you've been flying recently. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I, generally speaking, am a window seat person. But that's because okay. I'm a, like, uh, I am not a, I don't drink a lot on an airplane, like, um, of fluids of any kind. And so I don't really need to go to the bathroom that much. And so yeah. I choose, I prefer the window seat because I don't want to be bothered. I don't want to have to, like, get up for people. I don't want to have to get up myself. Um, I just kind of want to be left alone. So do you, because I, I tend to do this when I get on planes, that I go, I, I, like, power down, right? Like, I hibernate. I go into, if I'm wearing a hoodie because it's, like, a cold kind of season, I go hood up, right? Like, I'm going to do whatever I can to just disappear during that flight, um, which means, of course, shutting down a little bit of the bladder as well. Where you're just like, nope, not going to engage <laughs> with that at all. Yes, no, uh, completely. I'm if I'm traveling alone, or honestly, sometimes when I'm traveling with people, I'm like headphones in, hoodie mm-hmm. up, you know, just kind of like 
trying to be in my own world, which I feel like, I don't know about you, Patrick, but do you think that we're missing out on like life changing opportunities by not talking to our seatmates? I feel like you always hear stories um, in like Reader's Digest about people whose like lives were changed because their seatmate, you know, had some connection or was some business person. And next thing you know, they're like the CEO of a teeth whitening company. And no, it's all I'm fiction. wondering, Mark, Mark, it's all fiction. <laughs> I have only had bad conversations on planes. <laughs> um, because there was, you know, a period of time where I didn't go like, you know, where I wasn't like headphones in from like before, you know, the second I sit down. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I always uh, regret it because the, the, if the person next to me starts talking to me about whatever, um, like they're going to say something like, horrible almost without (laughs) fail um so like yeah i've i've just i've thrown even the possibility of that like straight out the window i'm not interested in talking to the person look you you said that uh you do that when you travel alone or even with someone and i like 100 percent. sarah and i when we fly together um we don't even make that much of an effort to sit next to each other (laughs) um we will, and I guess this this answers uh, directly your window or aisle seat thing. But we will frequently take um, nearby aisle seats, mm-hmm. like that we're on either side of the aisle. Um, and I I think I go for that because like you get just like a tiny bit more like leg room. Totally. Um, and like that that's useful to me. And like you know, I don't need to, I don't need to see out the window. <laughs> the thing I like about the window is I'm not much of a. Uh... It's hard. It's difficult for me to sleep on planes. It's difficult for me to sleep sitting up. And so I feel like with the window, you know, I can like lean against that and I don't have to worry about accidentally leaning on um, the seat partner. Instead, I just have to worry about all the disgusting germs that are on like the window wall. Yeah. Well, so that's that's another like component here. Right. Is that um, you aren't. okay. so like, do you want the germs that are on the window wall or. Do you want the germs of everyone as they're passing by you on their way up to the bathroom or whatever? Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, uh, it's kind of a no-win scenario. Yeah, I mean, that's true. Flying is a nightmare. Um, yeah. and I don't, don't, don't really recommend it. Um, how, how long was your most recent flight? I had like two hours. Not bad at all. Okay, yeah, that's, 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 that's like nothing. Um, I was on a flight recently up to Santa Rosa, California, which is like 55 minutes. And let me tell you, all flights should be cut down to like just <laughs> under an hour. <laughs> I don't know what needs to be done for that to happen, but like it's perfect. Yeah, I mean that would be the dream. What what was the was it the Concorde? Is that what the um uh those like hypersonic jets? Uh yeah, I don't know. The spruce moose? I don't know. What are we talking about? <laughs> What's a spruce moose? Spruce Moose was a uh, a big Spruce Goose. I don't remember. It's it was it was the goose. It's probably, it's I promise. Goose. The Spruce Moose was probably some tie-in with like the Rocky and Bullwinkle movie, yeah, you're or right, something you're right. like that. <laughs> the Spruce Moo- Goose, dang it! Spruce Goose was a a very big plane that was right. supposed to be like a a yacht in the sky by Howard uh, Hughes, right? Yeah, yeah, there we yeah. go. Yeah, mm-hmm. Um. Oh, uh, that is the applause there. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I actually think we talked all the way through the applause. Um, look, it's it's hard for us to do this uh, when the sound is just coming through my headphones. <laughs> uh, Mark, we were accompanied today by the K2 Orchestra. All right, let's get into the news. Like Patrick mentioned, last week, Nintendo showed off an Indie World Showcase with about 20 minutes of indie games, including several that released the same day. So we're going to run through kind of like the highlights here. But um, Patrick, just in general, how do you feel about this Indie World Showcase? I felt okay about it. Um, The uh, most of the games that I saw in here that I was interested in are either games that I have played before on other platforms uh, games that we have seen before in other presentations um, or uh, games that we have seen before in other Indie World showcases. Mm-hmm. And I also, I feel like with these uh, Indie, I was surprised with the number of 2022 games that yeah. were included here, especially because I feel like there are several, um, or at least I'm thinking of one, but I'm sure there are several 
games that were featured in previous Indie World showcases that we that haven't been released yet. Uh, the one I'm thinking of specifically is Bear and Breakfast, the um, Bear yeah. and Breakfast simulator starring a bear. Like that game, still interested in. And so, um, what about Hollow Knight Silk Song? Still, oh, yeah, just that's MIA. right. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Um, but there were still a couple of like fun looking games here. The first one that they showed off is Bomb Rush Cyberpunk. This is a 2022 game. It's an open world skating slash parkour slash uh, graffiti game. Seems very inspired by the Jet Set Radio. Games. Totally. Yeah. Um, but I really liked the like aesthetic of it. I really liked the characters. There's like this like dance and robot thing that I'm into. Um, so yeah, this this one looked fun. Yeah, it it, it looked neat. Uh, and I'll check it out when they do like a a, a sale on it or something. That's one of those. It, it looks like clean enough and polished enough that like you know it's going to be one of those like thirty dollar indie games. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Totally. Totally. Um, so I need a price drop on that. Next one we saw was uh, Toem, uh, which is a photo adventure which takes place in this like sort of black and white diorama world um, where like each of the spaces that you explore are these like a- almost Captain Toad-esque um, uh, boxes that you can sort of like, you know, manipulate the camera angle uh, and you take photographs and uh, it seems like a super chill laid back experience. Yeah, the soundtrack to this one reminded me of Animal Crossing New Horizons. Yeah. Yeah, and a little bit like a short hike as well. Yeah, completely. Up next was Loop Hero, which is coming this holiday and coming to Switch. So it's uh, out on other platforms. It's an old school RPG where you create the map for an auto-playing hero. Which, um, it's uh, I know this game got a lot of like buzz when it orig- originally came out on other platforms. Um, and is sort of like a fun inversion of the, you know, formula of like sort of turn-based RPG um, where you're not controlling the hero so much as you are like preparing the path that he goes on so that he's strong enough to, you know, tackle the boss when he reaches the end of it. Yeah, this is from Devolver Digital. Mm-hmm. And uh, the trailer, they, I feel like their trailers have a very like specific vibe to it, but the music they to this do. sounded awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, next up was, oh, and that's uh, coming th- this holiday. Um, and then next up was uh, Far Changing Tides, which is another 2022 game, early 2022, um, which is a sequel to Far Lone Sales. Mark, were you familiar at all with no, Far Lone No, no. When they said that uh, it was like the next game in the Far saga, uh, that was news to me. Yeah, it, the the developer said that it was like uh, the next game in like the Far universe. And I was like, mm-hmm. all right. <laughs> um but uh, it, it seems like it's kind of a, a, a moody, side-scrolling, sailing, exploration kind of game uh, where you're, like, running around on these. You're in, like, you're sailing around on, on like, a post-apocalyptic sea, uh, but you are, like, physically running around on, you know, whatever um, discarded piece of uh, ship that is, like, your boat. Um, so uh, it seems kind of cool. Uh, I just, I had never heard of the original Far Lone Sails. Up next was... Necro Barista Final Pour, which was released, uh, it's already out. It was released on the day that the Indie World Showcase premiered. So uh, I hate to do this, but the best way to describe this game is by describing a game that it reminded me of so much, which is Coffee Talk, which is a game like set in uh, kind of like this Pacific Northwest coffee house. You're a barista where you're mixing drinks and then different like uh people and mythical creatures are coming in and you're just talking to them and like helping them through their problems and necrobarista feels like it is very much in the same uh sort of vein just with um people who have died um and next up also out uh at the, the the same day uh, is garden story this is one that we saw in a previous indie world showcase where you play as a grape named concord uh, and you're just like running around a little town like doing stuff and planting crops and stuff up next was boyfriend dungeon which was a stealth drop the same day as the indie showcase and it's a dungeon crawler where you date your weapons and patrick this is one that we had heard about before right yes okay another okay. another one from an indie world showcase yeah um our our friend and previous guest on the show kelly nugent has been playing this uh, and really enjoys it uh, I know that this is a game right up uh, Kelly's alley. It's honestly a game up our alleys as well. 
Totally. Um, so I'm sure we will check it out and have impressions on this show at, at some point. Um, just as I expect, we will also have impressions or thoughts about Axiom Verge 2, which also uh, stealth dropped at the exact same time as the uh, Indie World Showcase. Um, and, uh, you know, it's a, a sequel to Axiom Verge, which is, you know, famously uh, an indie game that was worked on by a single developer um, and is sort of a Metroidvania style game. Um, this is still all of those things, but now has uh, sort of a two worlds, like light world, dark world sort of uh, thing going on. And while it is uh, like in the same world as Axiom Verge, it's not like a, an immediate sequel or like the same characters or anything like that. It's uh, much like far uh, changing tides is the next step in the far lone sales uh, universe. This is the next step in the Axiom Verge universe. I have never played the first game. And I wonder if like Axiom Verge 2 is something like is this good starting point for this or if it kind of like required reading to go back to the first game. No, I don't think it is. I, I, I think the the intent with Axiom Verge 2 is to, you know, be its own like kind of standalone thing. And everything I've read like in advance of it or not even in advance, but just since the game came out uh, like last week um, is that it is uh, great and, um, you know, as as fun as the original. Um, but with some of the like sort of you know wrinkles of uh, being a one man production sort of being ironed out. Up next is Shovel Knight Pocket Dungeon, which is releasing this holiday. It's an action puzzle slash dungeon crawler game where you play as multiple knights from the Shovel Knight series. And uh, I this is one that we had heard about as well previously when they were announcing I mean, all those Shovel Knight projects. <laughs> it's, it's possible. Um. It it made me go, hey, wait a minute, what happened to Shovel, Shovel Knight Dig? That's another oh, game that they yeah, uh, introduced. Yeah. Um, I am a huge Shovel Knight fan, um, and I like um, you know, puzzle games, uh, but I'm a little bit worried that this is going to be a little too like match three e for me. Mm, mm-hmm. Um, but like it, it it was sort of like looking at the video was tough for me to sort of wrap my head around the, what the gameplay of this game actually is. Um, maybe it'll be one of those things where like when you get hands on it, it just like starts to make sense. Um, I will of course check it out because I am a, sh- I'm a Shovel Knight fan. Um, I'm, I'm along for the ride. If they put out Shovel Knight content, I'm there for it. Um, and it was nice to get like the, they sort of had that little bit of like developer interview where, um, it, I think she was like the, the PR person for, um, Shovel Knight was like, we are envisioning Shovel Knight as a brand. He's going to come at you in all these forms. And, like, there's Amiibo functionality if you have any of this Shovel, shovel Knight Amiibo. Um, so, like, I'm, I'm there for it, man. If they're going to keep making Shovel Knight stuff, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be there to pick it up. Yeah, I mean, she also mentioned that it's been, what, seven years since uh, <laughs> yeah. Shovel Knight premiered, which in and wow. of itself is a little bit crazy to me. But, yeah, like, Shovel Knight is very clearly Yacht Club Games Mario. And, yeah. you know, he can star in a puzzle game. He can star in whatever they want, a fighting game. He can f- star in, like, whatever they want to throw him in. Which is kind of cool. It's it's fun to see them have that sort of success, especially with how much free content they have given away over the years with the original Shovel Knight. That um, yeah, it's it's I enjoy seeing their success. Yeah, I mean they effectively turned Shovel Knight into five games, right? Mm-hmm. Like there are five games worth of content in you know the the package that is the Shovel Knight Treasure Trove. I mean, it's it's pretty remarkable, but right? And I know they were just delivering on stretch goals which were maybe too ambitious or whatever, but like, right. I don't know. It's, it, it's perfect. I'm, I'm glad it's all there. Uh, Is sorry. Me or you? I, I don't know. We going, <laughs> I forgot we were going back and forth. I'll, I'll, I'll go next. Uh, next we saw Islanders console edition, which also came out the same day as the uh, showcase, which is a chill sort of like Island sim kind of game. Uh, and they uh, specifically called out your ability to, when you were finished developing an Island that you could move to a new Island, and start again, um, which is maybe calling out to the uh, people who were playing Animal Crossing and unable to do just that. Up next was Metal Slug Tactics, another 2022 game, one that we saw at E3 but didn't know at the time that it was coming to Switch. It's uh, developed by Dot Emu, uh, which is that same uh, developer that's doing the new Ninja Turtles game too. So, um, you know, they're doing some cool stuff. Um, Next up was Tetris Effect Connected, uh, which is finally uh, on its on its way to Switch, which means uh, Tetris Effect is going to be on everything because it's also on um, Xbox and all you know started on on PlayStation. 
Um, I love uh, Tetris Effect. Um, I will happily purchase it again so I can play it on my Switch, uh, especially with the, the new content in the connected version, um, which involves some like um, uh, like splits, not even like split screen co-op, but just like a couch co-op um, and couch like competitive. They showed off a mode where you are uh, where like different game boards connected and then you were like three different players like building Tetrises together all on like Whoa. one big board. It's so cool, man. <laughs> Is this the one that you played in VR on the PSVR? Okay, okay. Yeah. Man, yeah, I have not played it yet, but I am excited um, to check out Tetris Effect when it comes out this October. Same day, Metroid Dread Day? Is that right? Yeah, yeah, that's Metroid okay. Dread Day. Yeah, for sure. Um, it's it's such a good game in VR. Um, like, I mean, it's, it's such a good game, period, right? Um, but in VR, it's a borderline religious experience, right? Like, you can get, get like, almost a trance-like uh thing happening to your brain um as you just like slowly disassociate and are uh, you know telepathically (laughs) controlling pieces as they fall it's incredible um up next they showed off a sizzle reel with a bunch of games coming to switch soon uh should we just rapid fire do these back and forth patrick so Mm -hmm. up first was astroneer a split space exploration game there's 100 days which looked like it was a winemaking simulator and then Slime Rancher Plortable Edition. Uh, it's a first-person game, but uh, Plortable is pretty great. Yeah, a, a big big shout out to Plortable. Uh, next was a game called Lumbear Jack. Um, we may need to wait a little bit for a Bear Cafe or whatever it's called, Bear and Breakfast. Um, but I- if you want a, a bear who's cutting down trees, I guess this is for you. Yes, the uh, expanded bear universe. Um, Curious Expedition Two. And Gang Beasts all coming out on Switch in the next year or so. And then after the sizzle reel, Nintendo uh, did a little shout out to a game coming really soon that we had talked about on this show not that long ago. Eastward is releasing September 16th, 2021 as a timed exclusive for Nintendo Switch. And um, man, the music on this one also similarly rocks. Yeah, I mean, and you know, we we we're sort of bemoaning the fact that the gameplay in the um the gameplay it wasn't a, a trailer but like a, a a play along that IGN had posted a little while ago seemed like it was sort of uh, limited in the actual like variety of gameplay um this trailer made it look dope as mm-hmm. heck yeah um so i mean i i don't know i'm i may be like all the way back in on being excited about this game so uh yeah i'm 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 all about it let's get some eastward baby so all in all, a pretty good indie showcase, but mm-hmm. I, I have to admit, I, by the like October and November of last year, we were getting so many presentations from Nintendo with like all these like partner showcases, seemingly like at least one a month. I am kind of an, of an advocate for bringing back partner showcases. I think we should do it. I mean, I look, I love a good presentation. If they were to, you know, just like cycle through like every month here's an indie one here's a partner one here's nintendo direct proper here's a pokemon presents well i mean thank you for teeing it up so well patrick so organically there will in fact be a pokemon presents on wednesday morning august 18th at 6 a.m pacific time 6 Um, a.m six (laughs) pokemon.com describes this the presentation as quote exciting new information about pokemon legends Arceus, Pokemon Brilliant Diamond, Pokemon Shining Pearl, and more. And it's about 28 minutes long. Uh, Mark, you going to get up early for this one? No, 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 absolutely not. But, um, and, you know, because we, we have our uh, exciting conclusion to the Super Mario Odyssey outfits all teed up, um, we'll be talking about this next week. And so, really, you and I have the luxury of time as far as checking out this Pokemon Presents. Yeah, well, and I, I would, I always feel like the Pokemon Presents are light on news. They are heavy on information, right? Like, there's always a, a like a, a real look at the Pokemon games that are uh, that are coming up, sort of imminently. Um, but it's not really a place where they like break news about like new, big, exciting things in in these games. Um, and I feel like as media events, they are usually sort of disappointing. Um, but if you can just look at it as like, oh, yeah, I want to learn more about the next Pokemon game, then it'll be okay. 
Yeah, totally. I mean, I just feel like they're speaking to, they're directed to an audience that is not me, for sure. Well, um, yeah, I mean, certainly that as well, just as you and I aren't the biggest Pokemon guys. But that being said, the and more, you know, always a, a little tantalizing. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, who who knows? Like, probably maybe we'll, there will be updates for um, Pokemon United and, sure. you know, some other, like, maybe we'll hear more about that Pokemon Sleep thing, which hasn't come out right that didn't release i uh, know it did not <laughs> yeah okay so maybe we'll hear more about that i mean i think there's also a, a lot still to learn about uh pokemon arceus right or arceus um that like there is you know we we've seen sort of like conceptually what that game is and a little bit of you know a pretty early version of it in action uh, and it's a game that's slated to come out in january next year um so even you know even by wednesday it's still going to be months and months and months away right um so like i think there's a lot still to learn about what that is going to be in a way that like the uh diamond and pearl remakes i feel like we already know what those are right yeah that's true that's true although to me it feels like the right time to blow out if you're gonna blow out one of these things like pokemon diamond and pearl would be the ones because yeah i mean who knows who knows yeah i I mean it's I mean, I think you're right in that, like, the timing is right, but it's also, like, what all, what all do you have to show? Like, yeah, just, yeah. just the new, it's like, what, once you see the graphic style, you're like, okay, I get it. I know what everything's going to look like here. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. It's, it, and more is tantalizing. It could be, it could be something. But I agree, like, uh, no need to prognosticate too much, yeah. given that it is being, it's happening tomorrow. Right, so, right, right, right. yeah. Uh, we did, however, get the July, I don't know what the however was supposed to mean. However, (laughs) we got the July, 2021 NPD numbers. Uh, so let's talk about them. NPD, of course, is the, um, like research group that tracks North American video game sales. And so every month they put out a report and in July, 2021, the top 10 Nintendo games in North America were Skyward Sword. HD, Monster Hunter Stories 2, Mario Kart 8, Mario Golf Super Rush, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, Animal Crossing New Horizons, Super Mario 3D World, and Black Bowser's Fury, uh, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, Pokemon Sword and Shield, and Super Mario Party. Uh, which, you know, is, is a lot of like the sort of usual suspects, right? To see uh, Mario Kart 8, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, um, Breath of the Wild, Sword and Shield, Super Mario Party. Uh, it's amazing the longevity that some of these games have. It should be noted that uh, for all of these, if it's a Nintendo published game, they are not including um, digital sales. Um, so, uh, but they would have included the digital sales numbers for Monster Hunter Stories too, because that's a Capcom published game. And I don't have it in front of me, but I think like across all platforms, Skyward Sword HD was number one for the month. And uh, Monster Hunter Stories 2 had a good showing somewhere in the top five. I can't remember exactly where it was. I think number three. And across all platforms, the 2021 year-to-date top 10, um, Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War is number one. MLB The Show is number two. Resident Evil Village is number three. Resident Evil, or number four, is Super Mario 3D World and Bowser's Fury. And again, reminder, no digital is counted in this one. Um, number five is Marvel's Spider-Man Miles Morales. Number six is Monster Hunter Rise. Number seven is Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Uh, eight is Minecraft. Nine is Assassin's Creed Valhalla. And number 10 is Animal Crossing New Horizon. Uh, and again, no digital on those, uh, the Nintendo published games in there. Uh, yeah, I mean, Mario Kart 8, man. <laughs> they just keep selling. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh remember earlier this year when there were i hesitate to call them rumors because they're like fan seemingly like fan generated rumors like somebody's like wouldn't it be great if there was mario kart 9 and then people start speculating right like uh it's just like a snowball that rolls downhill but yeah it just seems um uh wild to me that nintendo would bother to create a mario kart 9 for this iteration of the switch because Because 8 still sells. Like, crazy. Like, it's still, like, the top five best-selling game, you know, like, uh, on the Nintendo Switch, like, every year. 
Um, I gotta say, I am encouraged and excited to see um, Super Mario 3D World so high on this list. Um, like, it, it's a game that I know I love, obviously. Um, but like, I I never really got a sense of like what the what its greater like cultural significance is. Uh, but to know that this year it sold better than uh, Spider Man Miles Morales, like that's surprising to me. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. Um, man. Patrick, I got to go back and play Bowser's Fury. I never did it. Mark, you you, you got too many games on this list of games <laughs> I know. To, it's, to play. It's, uh, luckily, I have, I, I have promised no one that I'm going to play Bowser's Fury. In fact, maybe I'll make a promise that I'll never play it. I'm, wow. not, saying I, I'm not saying I'm making that promise, but maybe right, I will. Push might. comes to okay, shove. Got it, got it. Yeah. We may be less than two weeks out from the release of No More Heroes 3, which in and of itself is crazy, but... Never too early to talk about No More Heroes 4, and when are we going to get it? When are we going to get No More Heroes 4? Well, in an interview with Game Explain, No More Heroes director Suda51 responded to a question about future games in the series by saying it might be as many as 10 years before he could make another. Um, he kind of draws comparisons to the Rocky series and says that the fourth game would find Travis, quote, going up against a super hardcore enemy up north who is basically the No More Heroes version of Drago from Rocky IV. Okay. Sure. All right. Yeah. <gasps> I just, oh, hold on, though. Hold on. Because we got to throw the brakes on it there. Uh, what does Rocky fight in Rocky III? Does he fight aliens? aliens? <laughs> Presumably. <laughs> I'm just guessing. I'm guessing No More Heroes is just following the path of Rocky all the way through. I don't think this analogy holds up as well as he thinks it does. And of course, all of this would be subject to approval by uh, the publishing company Marvelous because they own, according to Suda51, 90% of the No More Heroes IP. So um, it kind of seems like they're the ones who are calling the shots. They let him hang on to that 10%, though, for some reason. <laughs> do you, is, is Rocky V the one where there's like the robot and Sylvester Stallone's kid is in it? That that was going to be my question. I I don't think three is the one with the robot. I it, yeah. it must be five. Yeah, I think the robot. It, I think it, I I do think it's five. In which case, that's the one I'm looking forward to. Let's skip for wake me up when No More Heroes five is released. That's twenty and, years, Mark. Mark, that's and, twenty years from now. <laughs> and Travis Touchdown's kid is uh, featured heavily in it. Now, um, we had a few complaints from neighbors and listeners about the rumor alarm. So we're not sounding the rumor alarm this week, but be warned, we are going to talk about a rumor for a second. Mark, thank you. I consider myself warned. Is, I, let me pose a question to you, Patrick. Is yes. a Grand Theft Auto remastered trilogy making its way to Switch? Maybe. <laughs> Kotaku published an article last week that three remastered GTA games are in development at Rockstar. The games would be Grand Theft Auto 3, Grand Theft Auto Vice City, and Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, with a mix of new and old graphics. Not really sure what to make, make of that. No, very strange. Um, a revamped UI coming pretty soon, October, November, for basically all platforms, including the Switch. Of course, nothing is 100% confirmed here. And uh, so despite the fact that we didn't sound the rumor alarm, this is in fact only a rumor, but Kotaku seems pretty confident. Kotaku even used the language confirmed, uh, that, they, that they confirmed that the remakes are in development. Um, so I don't know. I guess, I guess they're coming. We, there hasn't been a new Grand Theft Auto game since Grand Theft Auto V, which is technically a, like a PlayStation 3 game, right? Right. But like why... The like for Rockstar, Rockstar has just been rolling in money from yeah. Grand Theft Auto, um, five. I d we have in the past have gotten Nintendo Directs in September. Um, not saying we will get one this year, but this would be a pretty cool uh announcement for a Nintendo Direct. Or if there was a partner showcase that featured <laughs> games from Rockstar, that'd be pretty sweet. No, that would be rad. Uh, bring those Rockstar games over to uh, Nintendo Switch. Earlier this summer, Nintendo pursued a permanent injunction against the pirate site ROM Universe, and just last week, a judge granted that request. This shuts down the website and prevents the owner, uh, Matthew Storman, from further copying, distributing, selling, and playing authorized copies or unauthorized copies of Nintendo products. 
maybe weirdly, the judge's order states, quote, the defendant shall permanently destroy all unauthorized Nintendo games or other unauthorized copies of Nintendo's intellectual property, including movies, books, and music, no later than August 17th, 2021, end quote. Uh, permanently destroy is weird language, right? For digital copies of things? Yeah. yeah. Don't really know what that <laughs> I mean. Not really sure what, what that means. What are they suggesting that he do? Also, I, like, I guess Nintendo has every right. You know, I think we talked about this case when Nintendo was suing them and um, the this person was ordered to pay, like, millions of dollars or something to Nintendo. Yeah. But I, I'm a little bit torn. I, I don't really know where I'd come down on this kind of stuff. I guess maybe they were, I mean, there is no shortage of ROM sites on the internet. I can't remember if ROM Universe was like charging people to access the ROMs. And so maybe in that case, if that is true, which now that I'm saying it out loud, I think is the case. Like, I do think that that's not great. Um, But in general, I'm all kind of for ROM sites, really, for like old, you know, like NES and SNES games and all that kind of stuff. Like, yeah, I would rather it proliferate. Yeah, I mean, especially just knowing that, like, Nintendo's good about, like, surfacing the stuff that they uh, like to surface and the, the stuff that they, like, absolutely own and control outright. But, like, you know, there are so many games that, like, are, we'll, we'll just never see the light of day on, like, any official channels. Um, so, like, I don't know, unless they're going to pick up the slack and, you know, start hosting some of these games themselves. It's kind of like, yeah, well, why... You know what is it? What does it hurt Nintendo for uh, someone to host fe- a, a ROM of Fester's Quest? You know, like it 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 costs them nothing, basically. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of how I feel. So, um, I guess where where I'm coming down on this is charging people for access to these ROMs bad. ROMs existing good. Sure, I agree with that. Finally, the next Nintendo Switch Online game trial for Nintendo Switch Online subscribers in North America and Europe is going to be Minecraft Dungeons. Ooh. Subscribers can play the game for free starting August 18th at 10 a.m. Pacific time, and the free trial ends August 24th at 11:59 p.m. Pacific time. Patrick, I haven't, I don't feel like I've really taken advantage of these. I think I did the um, Crash Nitro Racing or Crash Team yeah. Racing. Yeah. uh checking that one out but a lot of these have really passed me by and it is a cool thing that nintendo does or has been including for nintendo switch online subscribers yeah uh, i mean a- absolutely i sort of wish they would do it for uh greater lengths of time um you know this to, to have it up for like just sort of a, a long weekend is you know a, a little a little bit restricting um you know a- anyone else that is putting up a game for free um is doing it for like a month or something Mm -hmm, like that mm -hmm. um so i mean it's kind of a a a typically nintendo move but like yeah this is minecraft dungeons is one that i'm definitely interested in checking out um i just know anytime it's one of these like timed things that i'm gonna go in with the best of intentions and then not do it at all totally um, because i'll be playing you know whatever game that i you know i will not have my schedule dictated to me by what games are free (laughs) for the weekend you think you'll check it out no i i so like i mean like we've been talking about like there i have i'm so behind on the games that i um have been committing myself to play for whatever reason and so um anytime i walk by the switch i feel just like this deep sense of guilt and so uh, so no there's no way there's no way i just i couldn't i couldn't i couldn't do it to you patrick i couldn't do it to the listeners uh well let's stop doing this to the listeners mark let's get out of the news Okay, that is going to do it for this episode of Nintendo Cartridge Society. Remember, please rate, review, and follow us on Apple Podcasts. If you like the episode, uh, you can share it on Facebook or Twitter, wherever you share stuff, wherever it is. We appreciate it when you do that. You can follow us on Twitter. I'm at Patrick underscore Ellers. Mark is at MKE Mitchell, and the show is at Nincart Society. There's also a Facebook page, which is just Nintendo Cartridge Society. Olivia Duncan made our logo. Our theme music is provided by 8 Betty. You can get more of his music by going to 8BitBetty.com or by listening right now. For my co-host, Mark Mitchell, this is Patrick Eller saying in another 50 years, we can finally get to the Creed version of uh, No More Heroes. And that's, that's, that's when you can wake me up. Thanks for listening.
My name is Will Himes, and I am a ghost writer, meaning I write other people's books for them. And I have a podcast called I Will Write Your Book, which are recordings of my meetings with my eccentric clients, such as a woman blocked after one sentence of a children's book about her dogs, a romance novelist who dislikes sex, and a man proud of having sampled everything in his local grocery store. This podcast has been described as fully improvised, played by some of the best comedians on the planet Earth. Hey, that's pretty good. That's I Will Write Your Book on Campfire Media. Campfire.